In today's macro photography tutorial, we're taking a look at UV photography and specifically a Kiwi under UV light. It's going to be really interesting guys, so stick around and I'll get started. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapts Looks, and yes, today we're taking uh, some UV IVF shots of a kiwi, a really nice simple uh, subject for you guys to try at home if you have some UV lighting arms. Now, if you don't have any UV lighting arms and you're not sure what UV IVF uh, photography actually is, I definitely recommend starting with our explainer video, which I go through all of the uh, science of why uh, UV induced visible fluorescence photography is a thing and how you can achieve it uh, with all sorts of different subjects, not just kiwis. So this works with things like flowers and insects, as well as uh, man-made uh, chemicals that can be added to things like your bed sheets. That's why a lot of white clothing glows under UV, under black light. Today we're going to be doing the Kiwi though. It's uh, a pretty simple subject to get hold of and it glows really nicely under UV light. So I'm going to uh, get my UV lighting arms out and uh, have a look at this Kiwi. I'm just setting up on my coffee table for today's shoot. I've got my uh, camera out, it's sat on a macro focus rail and then on a tripod because we're going to be doing some long exposures and potentially some focus stacking as well. I've also got my Kiwi at the ready, but before we start shooting, there's one more thing that you need to consider and that is the environment that you're going to be shooting in. The idea behind uh, UV IVF photography is that we get only the, vi the visible light created by the fluorescence of the subject and no visible light from any other sources. That means you're going to need a very dark environment. So turning out all of the lights in your room, blocking up windows if it's daytime, uh, turning off any screens that are around will all help to uh, make sure that there's no visible light contamination in your images. And that's where our lighting comes in as well to help reduce that visible light contamination. While we do need to keep the amount of ambient light to an absolute minimum, we do still need some lighting. We need a UV light source, and we have that in the form of the Adapt Look Studio. So if you've not seen it before, this is the Adapt Look Studio control pod. It's got batteries, it's got control in here for the brightness of your lighting, and it's got five ports in the front into which we can plug lighting arms. These lighting arms are fully flexible and they've got LEDs which can be colored uh, in the front of the lighting arm and you can place these down right next to your macro photography subject, get really close and then get a lot of control over your lighting. This is just a regular white lighting arm, but I'm going to be using special UV lighting arms today. You can tell that they're UV because they have a little purple end. Let's take a look at what happens when we start adding UV light to our Kiwi. Now that we've got a few slices of kiwi to experiment with, it's time to start thinking about our composition. I've got a fairly simple composition here. I've got my camera just pointed down at about a 45 degree angle. I'm not worrying too much about my background for now. You don't need to do anything particularly special for your composition. There's no special tricks for UV. You can compose your shot in much the same way you would any normal macro photo. Uh, you do need to think about your lighting though. So I've brought a single white lighting in arm in here just to help uh, focus and uh, test our lighting before we turn out our main lights. If you've already turned out your lights and blocked up your windows, you'll need a little temporary light source here just to be able to focus. For now, this is acting as our UV lighting arm. I'm going to be looking for reflections and shadows. So you can see as I move my lighting arm around here, we have all of these juices on the surface of our Kiwi. Those will still reflect in UV. It will ref reflect the actual UV light back up in into the camera. You can reduce that by using a UV filter on the end of your camera, but it's usually not necessary. If you just place your UV lighting arms in a spot where there are no reflections, you should be just fine. The shadows though will still affect you. If you're using a single UV light source, uh, you'll still have areas of your image that are uh, in shadow and areas that are slightly brighter, just as you would with a normal uh, single light source image. So if I block up a little part of my image here, you can see that the shadow is casting across that piece of Kiwi. That would be the same 
in UV and it just wouldn't fluoresce. So if you've got multiple UV lighting arms, it's worth trying to bring them in from a couple of different directions just so you don't cast any shadows across your subject. The other difference between our white lighting arm and our UV lighting arm is exposure and brightness. As you might expect, the white lighting arm uh, works in a very conventional way. It's a white LED continuous light, so you can see exactly what is happening in front of your camera, choose all of your settings based on what you're looking at. With the UV lighting though, things are a little bit different. We're going to need to use a long exposure, hence why we're shooting on a tripod today. When you expose your subject to UV light, it's going to fluoresce. And this uh, depends more on the subject than the light source itself. Uh, different subjects fluoresce um, different amounts. So for example, shooting a flower, it might not fluoresce all that much and you might need a longer exposure to try and capture that. For our Kiwis though, they actually fluoresce quite a lot and in really interesting ways. This makes them a really great subject for starting out with UV IVF photography and for demos such as this, where we want a really nice, highly fluorescent subject to show off all of that interesting color and effect that happens um, in contrast to the white light. So I'm going to uh, change my white light now for two UV lighting arms. You're probably thinking, not a lot changed there. You plugged in those lighting arms, it was pretty anticlimactic. The picture just looks a little bit darker without that big white light in there. You'd be right, there's not a lot to see right now because we've still got the big lights on, we've still got a uh, lot of light in the room and we can't see this stuff with our naked eye. It would be tricky to see it even in the dark. And in there lies a little bit of a safety pointer. When you're using UV light like this, you do need some eye protection. My eyeglasses do actually have a UV coating on them, so no UV light will pass through the lenses on my glasses. If you don't have eyeglasses or uh, even sunglasses, they're designed to block out UV light as well. Um, you can buy some very cheap uh, UV glasses on Amazon for a couple of pounds, and they will do the trick in just blocking that UV light from entering your eyes. Now that we do have our light set up, I've got my UV lighting arms ready to go. I can turn out my lighting and change my settings. The settings that I'm going to go for are going to be based on what my uh, fluorescence is like from my subject. This is going to depend on how close you've put those lighting arms and the, of course the subject itself. The, uh, the Kiwi is actually quite fluorescent, so I think a shutter speed of about two seconds at ISO 800 and F13 will probably do the trick. As you can see there, the color of our Kiwi has completely changed uh, compared to our white light. What's happened is the UV light has been absorbed by the Kiwi itself, uh, and in doing so, it's used a little bit of energy the wavelength of the light has then changed when it's re-emitted, it's got less energy and uh, it's now a visible color. We're now capturing that color, so we're not actually capturing UV light at all. And this is why you don't need to make any modifications to your camera. It's doing the job that it was designed to do, it's just capturing very, very low levels of visible light that is being emitted by the Kiwi itself. Now, how fluorescent your subject uh, is depends on uh, a lot of factors and its chemical makeup, but Kiwis, they're pretty good, and you can see that the very center of the Kiwi there fluoresces a lot, and the sort of meat of the fruit on the outside, it glows a weird um, sort of reddish color. There's then a little membrane around the outside that glows a little bit more. I don't know this for sure, but I suspect that the amount of the fluorescence from the Kiwi would change depending on its ripeness and even if you were to leave it to uh, go off a little bit after it's been sliced and uh, let it rot even it would uh, create some really interesting colors as well a lot of foodstuffs do really well with uv ivf photography it's well worth raiding the fridge for a couple of different items and put them underneath the uh, the uv lights to see exactly what they do once you're happy with how the UV light actually works, how your subject is going to come out, and what settings you need, you can start to experiment, moving your subject around into different uh, positions, getting different compositions, and uh, turning the lights back on, refocus, recompose, and then turning them off again for your exposure. 
The thing that I'm going to experiment with now is a bit of focus stacking. So I'm going to plug in my um, shutter release cable here so that I'm not wobbling the camera too much. I'm going to use my macro focus rail uh, to take some image stacks and get a lot more of this subject in focus. Focus is a bit tricky in the dark. It's also a little bit tricky in macro in general because you'll get very shallow depth of field uh, simply because we're so close. If you're using a very wide aperture to uh, compensate for the lack of light, it's also going to affect your uh, depth of field. You're going to get it even more shallow. I do recommend trying to stick around uh, the, the midway mark with your aperture so that you're not getting that really, really shallow depth of field. If you don't mind doing a bit of focus stacking, bear in mind it does take a little bit longer than usual because we're taking two second exposures, maybe up to a hundred two second exposures, um, but the results really do um, stand out very, very sharp and with those interesting colors as well, I think it's worth the time investment. UV IVF photography is very, very satisfying. When you're sat in a dark room taking pictures as I've been today, obviously you've not seen me turn out the, uh, the lights because you just wouldn't be able to see me. Um, but when you're sat in a dark room and those images pop up on the back of the camera, uh, I've said it already, they're very, very satisfying. Um, when you don't know what your subject is going to look like under UV IVF, uh, it's going to surprise you almost every time. It has me and a lot of the time I know what's going to happen with any particular subject uh, and it still is very impressive when uh, your long exposure is finished and you can finally see the results. I definitely recommend checking out our other videos on UV IVF for a couple of other subjects including a lily and some lichen. Let me know what you think to today's shoot. Do you want to see some more UV IVF subjects, some more of this really interesting specialist type of photography? Uh, let me know down in the comments and give the video a like so that I know that you're enjoying this type of content. If you are enjoying this type of content, don't forget to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. That's all I've got time for now though, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.